Hello and Namaskar viewers, I am Sanjeev Pandya welcoming you to another episode of the Tax Talk with AJ right here on ITV Gold. Thank you for joining us and uh, just want to let you know the show is brought to you by Science CPS Services, a complete accounting firm. Also, they do uh, payroll services, bookkeeping services, and uh, they also advise you and uh, guide you on your taxes matter, whether it's a personal or corporate taxes, they will definitely help you out for any tax matter. Multiple locations in state of New Jersey, but help from them is only one phone call away, 908 380 6876. That's our phone number. SciCPSServices.com is their website. In person, over the phone, through Zoom, all kinds of meetings are possible, but taxes are taxes. Any question you have, even if you filed an extension and you still want to know the answer and you still want to know, you know, how do you want to have your tax return filed? It is always, always a good time to call Science CPS Services. With that note, I'd like to welcome Mr. A.J. Kumar of Science CPS Services. He himself is CBA, CPA and MBA with almost 30 years of experience and brings his knowledge and a guidance with us in this show to share it with us, to educate us and to inform us about taxes. A.J., welcome to the show. Thank you, Sanjeevji. I appreciate the kind introduction. Sure. And, uh, you know, you always tell us about taxes and, uh, you know, you give all the information that we really need to know what kind of tax return to be filed and how to, what kind of company that you should set up and everything. But from last week, you started to give us information on the audits, tax Absolutely. audits, which is very valuable because, you know, listen, taxpayers, they get confused when they are audited. They really don't know what do they need to do. First, they panic. And uh, they either say to somebody or don't say to somebody. But last week, viewers, you know, we uh, AJ started to tell us about the tax audit. What should you do and what kind of tax audits are there? In continuation of last week's show, we'll take it further. We'll give you more information. But before that, here is a small recap of last week's show. Uh, absolutely. So last week we talked about IRS audit, federal audit why the audit happens, what can you do uh, if you are getting audited, how do you respond to it. At a high level, the main reasons uh, are if you have cash intensive business, a lot of cash is coming to your business. If you are claiming Schedule C expenses, a 1099 NEC is what you are getting. If you are claiming travel expenses, 100% user of the, of the vehicle, that can trigger the audit. So the factors that we talked about in the last week episode are similar factors for the state audit as well. In the last week's episode, Sanjeevji, we covered federal audit, some examples of the federal audit as what you need to be careful about and how do you respond when you get audited. In this episode, we will plan to cover state audit, some samples of the state audit as what the state looks out for. If you get a state audit letter, it could be Department of Labor, Workers' Comp Audit, yeah. Department of Revenue, what you should do about it, how you should respond, and what you need to be careful about. So this episode, Sanjeevji, is more about a state audit mm. as opposed to last week's episode, which was more about the federal audit. Correct. But audit is audit. Absolutely. Whether it's a, fed, whether it's a federal audit or a state audit, right? The steps are going to be the same, uh, what you should do and how and why you can be audited. Uh, you are 100% right, Sanjeevji. So the basics remain same mm. as why you are being audited. Either you are collecting cash, not doing the right filing, some mathematical mistakes on your tax return, the numbers are not adding up, the state knows more about you than what you know about yourself. Especially when you have W-2, 1099, yeah any sort of income. State gets the information directly from the source. If you don't report all sorts of income on your tax return, if you miss interest income, dividend income, W-2, 1099, the chances are very high you will get a letter from the state. Mm. That being said, there are a lot of other criteria that the state uses. For example, if your year over year income changes drastically, that could result into an audit. Last year you paid tax on $100,000, this year you are paying tax on $10,000. What happened? What did we miss? A lot of these factors can result into federal audit as well as state audit. But again, the basics remain same, Sanjeevji. If you are being audited, please do not panic. 
there is no reason to be panicking. The initial letter is more of an information letter. We are reviewing your tax return and this is what we are trying to understand. If you have done the tax return through an accountant, through a CPA, they should help you defend the audit for you. If you have done it yourself, please don't discard the papers that you used to do the taxes. You have to save those papers for six years. If you are getting audited, you have all the proofs. Why did, why did you do what you did? What documents you used? And make a copy of all these documents and send it to them. The last thing you want, Sanjeevji, in these audit, to ignore the letter. You cannot ignore these letters. They will give you a fixed time frame. They will send you a second request. And after that, they will compute the penalties, interest, and the tax liability by default. If you don't respond, this is their calculation that they, you have to go by. So it's very important for you, if you don't understand the letter, take it to somebody, take it to an accountant, take it to a CPA, have them help you understand as what the letter is looking for. Okay, sounds good. With that note, let's begin the examples of the New Jersey State Audit as uh, AJ has um, you know, some uh, real uh, case examples to share with us. Absolutely. The first letter that we want to show you is coming from the state of New Jersey. If you see it on your screen, this letter seems to be showing a credit balance. It could be a debit balance also, meaning either you owe the money or you have overpaid. For this client, this client came to us not understanding the notice. The client thought the state was auditing the client. I, the client has a business. If you look at the letter, it looks scary. A lot of numbers over there, a lot of percentage. It's a payroll tax uh, miscalculation. In fact, the state is telling the client that the, the client has overpaid $750.80. So not all the audits are bad. In some cases, you will have a situation when the state is trying to give you money back. If you see, there are a couple of check boxes over there, which says, please select one. So you can just select the box, refund my money, and avoid applying the refund to the next quarter. It makes things more complicated. And it's a government system, government software. You want to keep it simple. Request the refund, select the box, mail it to the address given on the top left hand corner of the notice, and that's it. So this notice, the client was panicking when he came to us. The client was doing his own work. The client was doing his own payroll. He came to us in five minutes. He was relieved and he made $750. So please uh, make sure you respond to the notice. Make sure you don't panic. Make sure if you don't understand the notice yourself, you call the number. There is a phone number given on every single notice that you have from the state. Call the number. If you still have uh, questions, confusion, talk to an accountant, talk to a CPA. Let's move on to the next example. Before you move on to the next one, I have a question. By yes. looking at this, you know, uh, real case scenario where the taxpayer is getting $750 back. Right. This kind of situation doesn't happen in a federal tax audit, right? They it, don't it, give it, you money back. They'll just can. say they're going to apply. Well, you have both options, even with the federal audit. So uh -huh. even the state is giving you both the options. You can apply to the next quarter or you can ask for the refund. You have the same two options with okay. the federal. All right. A lot of times, just because the amount is small, hmm. we have seen a lot of small businesses sending out $750, not realizing, not realizing that they're getting money that back. It's a refund. Hmm. It's a credit notice. <laughs> Instead of going to the accountant, instead of taking time to understand the notice, they will send a notice, uh, they will send a check along with the notice back to the state. Now the state is sitting on $1,500 and after six months, they get a notice of $1,500 of credit balance. Yep. And now mm -hmm. they are thinking, well, I keep getting these notices. Last time I got $750, mm. now I owe $1,500. So <laughs> unless you resolve the situation, this becomes a perpetual situation. Mm. The notice will keep coming back to yes. you. All right, that's, that's interesting. So that's a one uh, real life case scenario. Let's go move on to the next one now. Uh, absolutely. So if you look onto your screen, this is another type of notice that is very, very common for a small business in the state. And uh, you will notice there are some D that are uh, put under NJ927. D here means delinquent. What it means is NJ927 is a type of payroll report. So there are two types of payroll report that the state requires, uh, WR30 and NJ927. By putting D in there, the state is implying that the state did not receive. Delinquent means they did not receive. Delinquency, not filed. 
and it's by quarter. NJ 927 is a quarterly report. What is, if you see on the screen, there are four Ds under 2019. So what the state is saying, we received NJ 927 for 2018, we received it for 2020, 2021, 2022, but 2019, there are four Ds. All the four quarters are missing. More than likely, in this example, the client did not have any payroll in 2019. We get these notices all the time. The client will bring it to us, especially the clients who are doing their own payroll. This, this is where the problem happens. Because the rule is, even if you have no payroll, either you do the zero filing or you let the state know that we have no payroll. And then you can always restart it again. In this case, client had the payroll in 2018 did not have payroll in 19, then he started again in 2020, 2021. So all he had to do is was to file a tax return with zero or say no payroll. Well, if you look at the option, there is one option, no wages were paid in the above mentioned quarter. Mm -hmm. You just select this box, put your name, sign the letter and send it back to the address given on the notice. Okay. But you must respond to it. If you don't respond to it, the minimum penalty is $50. It could be as high as $500. That's so, interesting to know to respond to it because we also, we, we must respond to the call that we need to take a break. Even though we don't have any penalty, but we have to take a break and we are responding to that message. We'll be right back after this message is viewers. Please don't go away because in the second half, more information on the state tax audit is coming your way. Stay with us. Welcome back to the second half of the Tax Talk with AJ. In this episode, AJ is giving us all the valuable information and he's letting us know what to do if you are ever audited, not by the federal government, but by the state government. And in the first half, he covered some valuable points and now we're going to continue. We're going to continue with the same true case scenario, uh, AJ, which you were discussing, that NJ927, uh, where taxpayer receives a notice and it says in each quarter, four quarters, it says D, D, D. D means delinquent. Absolutely. So going back to the notice, very, very easy to respond. A lot of people get panicky. A lot of people just ignore it, disregard it. Please just respond to it. Very, very easy notice. If you look at, there is an option, there is a box that says no wages were paid in the above mentioned quarter. Select that box, put your name, put your phone number, Put your email address, sign it and send it back to the same address where it came from. The address is given on the top of the notice. If you just do that, keep a copy for your record. Make sure you use certified mail just in case tomorrow if there's a question or if you get the same notice again, you can tell the, the government, you can show that you have a proof that you have responded to this notice. So please uh, be careful in how you respond. But it's a very, very easy notice. It can save you. Uh, hundreds of dollars if not thousands of dollars depending on how many delinquency you have so make sure you don't ignore any state notices moving on we have a couple of other live I just examples want, i just want to add one point for our viewers that when you receive a, a audit notice you know it's also um, that you should know it comes with a cover letter whether it's yeah. irs you have any um, that means a federal government or even any state audit right in this case i'm looking at the cover letter that this taxpayer must have received um, because not filing the payroll tax return so it comes with the cover letter and cover letter explains everything you may get you know panic or you may get shock in the beginning once you open the envelope but if you just take a deep breath and sit down and read it it's going to be okay uh, absolutely there's absolutely no reason to be panicking there mm. is nobody against you it's a state government it's a federal government they are not against you they are doing their job they need to complete their file something is missing please help us complete our file help us do our job look at it from that perspective nobody is behind you look at the notice read through it if you don't understand it take it to somebody who understand it and make sure you respond to it now, showing you another live example, these are real examples, they are not made up examples. They are on your screen what you see, they are real examples. And the next notice that we have comes from Department of Taxation, it's a Department of Revenue Audit. These audits are much rarer and much more involved than what you see on the first two. So the first two examples of delinquency and uh, some small credit payment from the payroll taxes, the first notice was only related to payroll taxes second notice was not filing certain reports this 
the third example that we have that comes from Department of Taxation. This is Department of Revenue Audit. This is very involved. And there is no reason, there is no rhyme or reason why the state is auditing. A lot of these audits are truly random. Some of these audits can be based on certain uh, disgruntled employees complaint. I will discuss it in our fourth uh, live audit, which is Department of Labor audit. But when you get this type of notice, they will ask for kitchen sink and everything that you know. Your name, your wife's name, your dog's name, your cat's name, your neighbor's name. So these audits are extremely involved. So make sure you take the right help. The last two audits that we are going to talk about, Department of Revenue Audit and Department of Labor Audit, are a little bit more involved than the first two audits. Okay. We strongly recommend our viewers to take professional help for the last two audits. If you look at on your screen, so there are 11 things that we have listed. This is, mm. this is a general report. They will ask for the general ledger. It could be one year, two years, three years. If you notice, in this example that we are showing you on the screen, they are looking for trial balance general ledger for last four years, 18, 19, 20, 21. And if you don't do it right, they have the right to ask for 2022 as well, since 2022 is over now. So these notices are, a lot of these notices are standard pre-printed notices that the client will get. They ask for the bank statement for all the years, 2019, 2020, 2021, everything, including all bank accounts for the business. They have the right to go for the personal account as well to ensure that no money is being deposited into shareholder's personal account. So as you can see, the list is very, very involved. It's very important for you to do it right. The exposure on the Department of Taxation Audit is very high. So whatever income they decide, was omitted, not reported on your tax return, that becomes taxable. And the state in New Jersey, they can charge anywhere from 5% to 9% taxes on that income. So the liability, the exposure with the Department of Revenue Audit is very high. A typical Department of Revenue Audit can take anywhere from three months to six months. It's not something that will be done tomorrow. So don't panic, it's, you are in, the, in there for long term. Keep uh, giving them the right information. Be courteous. It's their job. They're not against you. They're just trying to do their job. They have kids, they have family. So there is absolutely no reason for you not to be courteous, not to be uh, polite about it. Give them the information. Try to be helpful. Tell them politely, this is what I have. I don't have what I don't have. If you don't have the general ledger politely, I have the bank statement. This is how I did my taxes or I use this software, I use this accountant. If you use an accountant to do your business taxes, let the accountant respond on your behalf. They can help you in responding, in, in phrasing certain answers as how the tax was actually prepared. Make sense? But they're asking for a lot of things here, all the 11 items, uh, you know, from uh, absolutely. Ledger, tri -bench, bank statements, sales journal for the year, and so on and so forth. All purchased invoice. Oh, yeah. Can you believe that? I mean, consider a business, uh, uh, any business, grocery store, pharmacy, all purchased invoices. I mean, think about it. Grocery store, pharmacy, auto shop. How do you find all purchased invoices that you have for the whole year? And remember again, the, this audit is for four years. It can be extended to fifth year. So they are asking for a lot of information. Box is full of information. And a, a lot of time, these audits are done because you did not do the sales tax filing. A lot of grocery stores are expected to do the sales tax filing. A lot of pharmacies are expected to do the sales tax filing. A lot of these audits occur when you missed certain filing or in case of Department of Labor audits in GFG, if somebody complains. Let me ask you a quick question right here. As I'm looking at it, this is the four years tax audit, right? Yep. Copies of taxpayer individual tax returns yep. for the years. 1, 2, 3, 4, 18, 19, 20, 21. And you were saying that this is the kind of audit because not filing a sales tax return. That's how it's getting how triggered. How could their accountant go by through this by not filing sales tax returns for four years? I don't think this is an accountant audit. This I, is the, that they're doing it personally? A lot of time, a small business owner, they try to save money they become penny okay. wise a okay. lot of times a lot of these small small business owners using their online software to do certain things and this is when the mistakes are made this is when the audits are done okay. a lot of uh, these small business owners are audited only because 
they did not cross the the t's mm. dotted the i's and that's when the situation gets out of hand mm, that's interesting man you know and four years of sales tax returns someone could say that i didn't know that i had to file no, or or not knowing is not an excuse exactly so uh, you, if you have a small business you have the responsibility to do it right mm. to fo- to make it compliant to follow the guidelines if you can't really say i did not know about it the, the, this work. shows like clear intention of not absolutely. filing a sales tax absolutely return. okay so moving on to the last a uh, live audit that we have mm. this comes from department of labor audit again very very involved the last two audits department of revenue and department of labor audits are extremely uh, rare and extremely involved the last two audits you do not want to do it yourself most department of labor audits happen because either you don't have the workers comp insurance or you have 1099 subcontractors who should be your employee so please understand the difference between 1099 and w2 make sure people who are working for you uh, if they are working continuously regularly even though they are not working for 40 hours even though they are not working for 20 hours they should be your employee not the 1099ers these audits are very common for disgruntled employees you you fired somebody now this person is going to the state that he was not paid the overtime for the hours that this person worked more than 40 hours in this example they should have been paid certain overtime they were not giving the sick pays the state has ruled that every 30 hours you get 1 hour of sick pay in in new jersey so you have to be careful when you have employees when you have that you are following the labor okay. laws good and these are the audits that get triggered and make sure you take professional help with department of labor and department of revenue audit always keep your accountant cpa always ready and uh, always ask for their advice and help i have one last question quickly uh, between the federal audit and the state tax audit at science cpa services which is a very reputable accounting firm um let me you know let me ask you this question what do you see more taxpayers getting it state tax audit uh, notes or the federal tax audit notes the state is typically more desperate than to the collect federal money, government to collect money to collect the money yeah, okay. you will see a lot of state audits happening mm. all the time okay you you did not do anything wrong the state is auditing you all that's right. okay chill down uh, make sure you respond to the audit make sure you provide them all the information make sure you come across as supportive okay good thank you once again aj yeah thank you so very much for giving us all the information we need to know about this audit audit flags and um, you know viewers we hope that this has really really helped you um once again thank you so very Absolutely. much for your time for your Absolutely. guidance during the tax season and uh, i am sanjeev pandya once again thank you so much for watching the show thank you for your comments thank you for your suggestions and um, we'll be back after the short break short when i say short break we'll be back not for this episode but after a short break uh, during the month of summer we'll be back with uh, more information the business news and the tax news for you right here on uh, same tv channel that's your favorite itv goal until then enjoy your days enjoy your life and uh, do take care of yourself and your loved ones i am sanjeev pandya wishing you all happy days ahead so long thank you